We start with a point. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. My name is Rob Bryanton, and this is the Imagining the Tenth Dimension video blog. Today's entry is called Photons and Free Will. And it connects to a, one of my favorite blog entries from 2010, Light Has No Speed. That one really generated a lot of interest and uh, discussion here on YouTube. And uh, if you haven't watched it, uh, please do click on the link I'm providing you here to go watch that one sometime. We talked about one of the central ideas in that entry not long ago in an entry called At Right Angles to Space Time, where I showed you two intersecting arrows. And here's that diagram again, this time with a little more explanatory text added. Understanding that our reality is actually a continuously evolving series of points in the fifth dimension, representing the intersection between these two lines, is key to understanding my approach to visualizing the extra dimensions. Think about these ideas. From a photon's point of view, there's no space, no time. The time it takes for light from a distant star to reach our eye does not exist for a photon. From its perspective, it took no time to reach us. In that sense, thinking of this photon's path is like thinking of the long undulating snake we think of in my project, or the spine concept that Bruce Sterling likes to talk about. It's a data set that connects the past to the future, viewed from outside of space-time. If that photon had not reached our eyes, it could have continued on into the future, traveling from that distant star many light years away with the light that from our perspective is already from many years ago. But even from the perspective of a photon coming from the very beginning of our universe, traveling to the very end of our universe, this would still all happen simultaneously. For such a photon, the entire life of our universe would be one single event. This reveals the contradiction in believing in free will and believing that there's nothing beyond our 4D space-time. From this photon's perspective, then, there is only one single past, one single future, and everything is inevitable including the dogged insistence that the free will we believe we're experiencing is real, when in fact it's only an illusion. But thinking of our space-time universe as having only one path from its beginning to its end leaves us with no easy way of understanding non-locality or quantum entanglement. These effects seem mysterious, unfathomably weird. This photon's perspective we're talking about here doesn't have room for such spooky actions as Einstein referred to them to occur. And yet quantum theories have been confirmed through experimentation to a higher degree of accuracy than any other theory about the underlying structures of our reality. In Time's Illusions, we talked about the two kinds of now that are shown in this diagram. And we started a poll question to see which kind of now people think of as applying to our space-time reality. Then, with that right angles to space-time, I started another poll question asking if people agree with that blog's title as a definition of light. Now here's the kicker. In both cases, there's a third all-of-the-above answer I should have provided, but I chose not to because it would have been so easy for people to select that without thinking about the other options. That answer, as I hope I've made clear with my blog entries uh, in the last while, is that our space-time now is in the fifth dimension, not the fourth, so both versions of now are correct depending upon your perspective. And because both light and gravity push against each other to create our reality, whether you think one or the other is at right angles to space-time also depends upon your frame of reference. As I've said before, it's the same with the third dimension. Calling the directions added by the third dimension up, down, or forward, backward, or left, right, or whatever doesn't change what you're adding, because these are just labels that are defined by the frame of reference already established. Likewise, what we call the additional degree of freedom afforded by the fifth dimension can change depending upon your frame of reference, or which of the two now arrows pictured in this diagram you choose to assign to the fourth dimension. We'll talk about how our reality is defined at the fifth dimension as we look next time at an entry called Time-like Entanglement. Thanks for watching and enjoy the journey.